Hi, everybody. As I'm here, your transformation coach and founder of Heal the Heart. I empower you to achieve mental emotional clarity, find your purpose, and take actions to a living a more fulfilled and happier life. We are here for another Breaths of Inspiration series where women come together to inspire each other and empower others with their experiences and sharing what they've gone through that they empower themselves. We are joined today via Zoom, which is a new one for me, uh, by, jo by BB Jordan. She is a photographer and founder of Nomad Chic travel. Welcome, Abibi. I'm so happy to be here. I love your series. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Bibi actually founded the uh, Nomad Chic Travel and tapped into her passion as a result of watching her home uh, going into flames and turn into ashes at the Woosley Fire. And instead of being trapped or allowing herself to be trapped in the emotions that she will discuss and talk about, uh, she used that to help herself to be transformed and also make it a, a mission of her to, tr to help others transform uh, while they're going through trauma. So uh, one of the things that she's saying is that everyone experiences trauma and grief in their lives. It is how we respond to those experiences that determines the next phase of our lives. I was reading your uh, story and it is just amazing and I cannot wait to hear from you in person that what were those emotions that you were going through that while you were watching your home go going down uh, you know, burning down to ashes and going up in flames. So can you tell us about that? Well, the fire, I was aware of the fire early in the morning when I woke up and I only had a very short time to evacuate. Um, I had prepared and thought about this, but the matter of fact is that you can only take what you can put in your car and at you can't necessarily fill up your car. You've got to get out before you die. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, you, you are filled with adrenaline. And it is actually not until several days later that you start coming in touch with your emotions. So it, it was not until maybe a week later that I started to feel emotions. What made me cry the first time was when a friend of mine called me up and she said, Bibi, what are you doing for self-care? And I started crying because I had not thought about myself. I had a couple of people who were, had been volunteering at our Airbnb and I was so consumed with taking care of them and taking care of everyone involved that I'd never, I had stopped thinking about myself completely. So this was the source of your livelihood, literally, this was your business besides was, being your yes, home. I had a wonderful Airbnb and I had um, been inspired by my travels to create rooms, little cottages. One was a safari tent, one was a tiny Japanese tea house, one was a Zen retreat, oh. one was a yurt, and one was a teepee. So um, wonderful. And I served organic meals to the guests. And this became my healing practice, would be to have everyone come to the communal table and curate conversations. And I found that people really opened their hearts. Mm -hmm. um, and that is actually what I found that I... I grieved for was that connection that I was able to have on a daily basis with people mm. more than my possessions. Okay. All right. And then uh, when you were asked, what is your self-care? Well, to me, 
and it is natural to be in shock. So because you you have to save yourself. It's not about like you said the material stuff anymore. It is about uh, you know how, your livelihood. How am I going to stay alive and getting out of this? And that sense of shock uh, that didn't allow you to tap into your emotions and really acknowledge them and feel them and work through them. So tell me about afterwards when you got to that point that I got to do something to get back to me and to take care of and acknowledge these emotions that are trapped inside me in order to move forward. Well, when the uh, adrenaline was still pumping, I, I, my first reaction was, thank God I still have my hair, my skin, and my brain, and my heart. And yeah. I went, I am not going to become um, a victim of pity. I want to rise like a phoenix from the ashes. And I had this um, message downloaded to me immediately. One of my favorite quotes from Karen Blixen, who wrote Out of Africa, and incidentally, her farm broke, uh, burnt down too, was any sorrow can be born if it is converted into a story. So I immediately started thinking, how do I want to be the heroine in this story that I'm going to write that starts with this woman having her house burnt down? And how am I going to continue my life? I have a brand new clean slate. What is it that I always said I wanted to do? Because now, that's what I'm going to do. Every day I had to look for a source of growth, um, a realization, a sad, strong, whatever. Um, so it put me in a very philosophical approach. And also I was always thinking about this story I want to create, which is my life moving forward, continuing to be blessed with a fantastic life. And so that was a key technique for me. When with my clients, I, I, take, I help them to take their attention away from focusing on the negatives and looking at, even though this must, must be, might be the most difficult time of their lives, it is, uh, there is something that they can be thankful about. And it seems that you took your focus off of the loss and put it on to, through this, I can find those pieces of gems that I have been forgetting to look at, that I have been letting go and pushing aside because I want, I, in my mind, I wanted to focus on this. And this what were some of those emotions? Tell, tell us about those raw emotions that, and, and, I know that you decided to step up and not to be in that dark place, but what was that place? So what did it look like? And what triggered you to not wanting to be there? Um, you know, I had so many beautiful things. These things that I owned um, were beautiful <clears throat> to me for the experiences that we had with them. Um, Crystal, china um uh, silver that had been passed down from my family things that i had collected from my travels and these were things that i wanted to share with my children i, I wanted to put that thought away because it was not helping me i realized that a lot of the things that i had were actually packaged up in boxes and were in drawers and many of the things that you know i thought back and i went oh my god that I don't have that beautiful Japanese wedding kimono. I hadn't touched that for five years. And so I, I allowed myself to think of it as having energy and that energy had been re released to the universe. So um, you were able to stay focused on what you wanted to do and understand the reality that material stuff are really not of the value you yourself your mind your you are your highest value and what you can do uh, as a result of your experience helping others 
Yeah. It was really my um, children, and I would say that was my greatest motivation because I did not want to, I didn't want them to go through the stress of seeing me fall apart. And also because I know I wanted to be an example and I wanted to show them that, you know, you can take adversity and create um, opportunity from that. Yeah. And then the other thing also was that, and so that really helped me because I didn't want to let them down. Mm -hmm. And when I would get kind of down, I would look out and see who I could help and try and help other people. Mm -hmm. um, I did a, a, a day of self-care and filming and shamanic healing and created these iconic portraits for several of my friends who had lost their homes where they were photographed on the ashes of their home. Another thing I did was I went down and I worked as an art therapist at um, the asylum camps of in Tijuana of all of the um, Central Americans trying to get asylum in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To help other people is so important because you realize that everyone has trauma and stress and you realize that we are often much better equipped we have so many resources and powers that we tend to forget I say that one of the very important things is to help other people uh, step out of your grief and go and help other people because by realizing that other people are struggling and that you're not alone it helps you realize that this is a process we humans go through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know you don't have to be a victim you even though you're um even though you may have lost your house um you can still go and help other people you're not powerless yeah and uh this is the the several times you mentioned this it is uh, what my takeaway is that it's stop focusing on your own pain and recognize that others are also going through similar or somewhat a, a, a difficult situation and try to to look at their situation and then you find in the process how lucky you are that you you know even though you your perception of your situation is that it is the worst but there are more worse things in the world that we are thankful not to be so, experiencing it's it's very interesting and i feel thankful that at this point in my life that i have had these realizations um and that i've taken action um and that I am living my life the way I want. I listen to my heart. Um, Very important. I look for signs. I'm open. I don't, I am careful not to think and act from fear, but rather from the heart. Mm -hmm. And as a result, a lot of wonderful things have started happening. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much. I was actually going to ask you what is one last thing you would like to share with everybody that they, you know, and it seems that that is exactly what you said. Think from your heart. Right. Because your heart knows before your brain does. Uh, your brain is the one that um, analyzes and bring the judge in and t tells you all the things that might go wrong. But in your heart, you know what is right and then you can analyze it accordingly but not from the point of view of fear right yeah thank you so much bb i really appreciate you uh reaching out to me to uh tell your story and i'm hoping that other people who see these videos and have a story i'm hoping that they would reach out to me and we can just chat and, and share see. their story thank you so much Thank you. It's been a pleasure chatting with the you. The same here. You take care.